Back with the Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. Uh, Congressman, uh, you're one of the uh, GOP lawmakers who still have doubts about Donald Trump. A lot of Republicans are urging Trump to change. Under what circumstances could you see yourself supporting him? It's hard to really tell. I, I, there's no blueprint. There's no thing where I say, you know, he be A or B or whatever. It's like one of those things you'll know when you know it. And, uh, you know, look, I'm not a never Trump guy. I think it's early to say that because we want him to obviously come and reflect Republican values to begin to talk about the things that are important to us and, and to begin to sound like a guy worthy of Abraham Lincoln and Ronald Reagan's job. So in my mind, it does no good to say I'm a never Trump guy. Uh, I want to get to yes. Uh, but, you know, what it's going to take, I guess I'll have to see when it, when it happens. You know, if he's willing to begin to speak like a president, to outline an articulate foreign policy, uh, to be more focused on uniting a country instead of dividing it, I'd love to get there. Because, look, I'm a Republican. I'd love a Republican to win the White House. But I'm an American before I'm a Republican. Do you think his vice presidential running mate uh, candidate could give you the confidence you need to support him? It depends. You know, not necessarily. I mean, typically people put a lot of stock into who somebody picks as vice president, but it really doesn't have much of an impact on the election. Ultimately, we're electing the vice president to be there in case the president is in in incapacitated and can't continue his job, in which case that person becomes president. So, you know, the idea that somehow a vice president for me is going to be the thing that tips Trump over the scale, maybe it is, maybe if he comes a long way to that point. But as of now, I don't see that as being the issue that could put me on on Trump bandwagon. I'm not going to vote for Hillary, uh, but I'm definitely going to make sure I vote down ballot for people like Mark Kirk in Illinois. Uh, well, speaking of Mark Kirk, uh, he's your Illinois colleague, the senator. He says he will not support Donald Trump regardless of the impact on the Republican Party. Let me read a quote from uh, Senator Kirk. Our president must be fit to command the most powerful military the world has ever seen, including an arsenal of thousands of nuclear weapons. I have concluded that Donald Trump has not dem demonstrated the temperament necessary to assume the greatest office in the world. Uh, you're a military veteran. You served in Iraq and Afghanistan. Do you agree with him? Well, look, I, I haven't seen that kind of temperament in Donald Trump. And my hope is I begin to see it, you know, as he as he realizes, hey, this this election's five months away. Uh, I need to buckle down. I need to get serious. It, it's sad I'm sitting here in June having to tell you this, but I am. Um, but, you know, look, I haven't seen that temperament yet. I hope to see it at some point. Every legislator has a decision to make out here when they're making decisions about Donald Trump. I don't fault anybody that supports him. I don't fault anybody that voted for him. But at the end of the day, I have to make that decision as well. And it's a tough position to take because, look, a lot of people in my home district that support me uh, also support Donald Trump. So you have a lot of questions with that. But again, as every individual, as every American has to analyze this, just because you're a member of Congress doesn't mean you necessarily have to go along. You have to, you have to be at peace with these decisions in your heart as well. As you know, there are some Republicans out there, uh, part of that so-called Never Trump movement, uh, fierce conservatives don't want Trump to be the Republican nominee, who think it's still possible to get someone else, another Republican third-party candidate, let's say, or maybe some sort of Republican to challenge him at the convention. Is that at all realistic? I think anything's really realistic right now. It's been a very odd election cycle, and we've seen that a lot of the typical rules are thrown out. Um, yeah, I mean, theoretically, there could be a change at the convention. I don't see much of a path for that really happening because these are a lot of, you know, Donald Trump's delegates that are going to be at the convention making the decision. There's no, like, you know, great party strategy to come in and change anything. It's all the delegates now that make these decisions. And in terms of a third party, it's still possible. But every day that goes by, those barriers get more and more difficult. And so uh, it looks like we're, you know, we're, we're down to basically Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, and Gary Johnson. And... I have some thinking to do between now and uh, November. Would you say uh, Gary Johnson, he's the Libertarian Party nominee. Is it possible you might support him? No. I, you know, look, Libertarians have some good ideas on certain things on economics and, and whatnot, but I don't agree with their foreign policy. I think an engaged America around the world is not just good for the world. It's good for every time we've isolated. It's come back to bite us later. Congressman Adam Kinziger, thanks so much for joining